Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Quarantine Talk. It's uh, day three here, and we're still doing all right. So today I thought I would talk a bit about browsers and building browsers, because there's this narrative going around on the internet right now about how it's just not possible to build a new web browser from scratch. And it's something that comes up from time to time, and usually in places like Hacker News. And it's um, someone goes to the W3C website, and they look at the list of specs, and uh, they're shocked. And they conclude that, well, there isn't any way anybody could possibly implement all of this. And um, it's, it's true, you know, in a way, uh, if you, if you want to implement all of it. But uh, you, you don't need to implement all of it uh, to make a browser. And speaking as someone who's been working on browsers for many years, I, I think I'm somewhat qualified to talk about it. So I, I don't agree with the narrative that it's not possible to build a new browser. And um, some people say that, oh, you, you, you could do it, but you would need hundreds of engineers and millions of dollars. And I, I don't agree with that either. Um, I think if you don't care about making money from it, then all it really takes is time and effort. And I'm willing to put both of those in. So uh, I am building a browser. And if you're on this channel, then you already know that because I've been posting browser hacking videos for like two weeks now. And um, it's really fun. And I'm learning so much. And, you know, it's it's not like... It's not like I think I know how to do everything. I definitely don't know how to do everything, but I've worked on browsers enough that I have an understanding of each of the components needed. And I understand them, I think, I understand them conceptually well enough that I, I can start to build them. And then it's just a matter of sort of filling in the missing parts. But of course, yeah, it will take a lot of time. But it's so much fun. And... Uh, there's this interesting kind of counterintuitive thing about it that I find that building a new browser on top of a new operating system somehow makes it a lot easier for me. Um, now you would think it would it would make it harder to be on this unstable platform that's like a moving target and things are unstable and immature, but I feel like it just makes me more productive because I have such a strong understanding of like literally the whole software stack. And it just helps me do everything very quickly, very efficiently. So it's 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 an interesting feeling to to understand the system to the degree that I do at the moment. And I hope I can keep it that way. And I'm I'm trying to share it with people, and um, I feel like it is it is very interesting this video process where I, I record my work and then people watch it and they share the experience and I feel like I'm sharing um, sharing the understanding of the system that I have um, as much as possible through the video format and I hope it's working uh, it does seem like it does seem to work to some degree like people do ask me very interesting questions about the system that I guess uh, it does help build an understanding watching me work on it so I think that's that's really cool. Um, and anyway, I, I, I just wanted to comment on this because I, I think it's it's certainly possible to build a new browser. And um, and I'm doing it. And if I get some help with it, that's cool because then we can work even faster. But even if nobody would be interested and I had to do it myself, I still think it's possible. Um, you just need motivation. And I looked at the W3C spec uh, page today, and I sort of used a little filter thing to filter by recommendations only, so that you only see the specs that are actually published as, like, this is a recommendation from us. And then it's, then it's down from... I don't know, like a thousand to three hundred or something like that, and, and then if you look at those specs, uh, a lot of them, the vast majority of them, are absolutely not necessary for a browser to implement in order to browse like ninety nine point nine percent of the web. And 
I, I looked at, I went through the list, and I, if I'm being generous, I would say maybe 25, 30 of them are actually necessary to implement partially to browse the web. Um, but you, you don't need to implement everything in those specs, just parts of them. And yeah, a lot of hyperbole around this subject, I guess. I think um, there's something about this that, that makes me feel a bit energized in a way, that when I see people talking about something that, oh, you couldn't possibly do this, and then I'm just sitting at home doing the thing that they're talking about how it's impossible, that does give me some fuel and motivation. But at the same time, I don't want to get smug, right? Or, and I don't want to get... Um, I don't want to become reliant on this feeling of like, haha, I'm doing it, I'm proving you wrong. Because I don't, I don't want to do stuff out of spite or to prove a point or something like that. I just want to stay in my curiosity. And it does feel a bit dangerous to give in to this feeling of, haha, I'm proving a point. So I try to stay away from that. Um, but it, it, does, it does taste a little funny. Um, and another thing is when I tell people that I'm building a new browser, then, um, unless, unless they're the type of person that just says, ha sure you are, uh, it's never going to happen and so on. Um, then, uh, people often ask me, okay, so what are you going to do differently than the existing browsers? And I feel like I've talked about this before on this channel, but I can talk about it again. So uh, the things I would do differently, um, are that. I don't care so much about JavaScript performance as a user, so I probably wouldn't focus on that much at all, really. Um, I wouldn't do a just-in-time compiler or optimizing compiler um, or things like that. I would just do a basic interpreter that can interpret the language and um, basic garbage collector and everything. And, you know, optimize within those margins, but not go crazy and build this stack of compilers and stuff that, that major browsers do these days because um, JavaScript performance is such a huge competition field. And as a user, personally as a user, I don't really care that much if my page takes a while to load. I can wait. <laughs> and um, just because the simplicity of it, it it's so different. Um, what you what you get in performance, you pay for in complexity, right? And for me personally, I would rather have a very simple browser that I can understand completely rather than um, a very complex browser that, that renders JavaScript-heavy uh, pages really quickly. But everybody's different, you know? People have different goals and desires for a browser. These are just things that I like. And then... I'm also kind of in this, I feel like there's two camps of how people think about browsers. There's like the web app people, and then there's the smart document people. And I'm definitely in the smart document uh, group, and it's a shrinking group. But I really feel like the web should be about smart documents more than web apps. Because um, I like native apps. I always did. And uh, I like... I like making apps in C++, and I like these desktop-looking apps with buttons and menus and things. Um, so things I would do differently there is, like, I wouldn't relinquish complete control of my computer to the web. Like, um, I feel like the, the modern web is sort of steering in that direction with, you know, service workers and web apps that do things when you're not looking, and... And they have access to notifications and things like that. And then you got, you know, Google trying to put Bluetooth and USB and who knows what into the web platform. And I, I don't want any of that. Like, I don't want the, the, web, the web that I expose uh, in my browser to um, provide any of those facilities to content. And I wouldn't even let the web style my form controls because I like the way the buttons look in Serenity and I want them to look that way if you browse the web in Serenity. And the checkboxes and the radio buttons and so on. And yes, it's going to look like a little 
unusual if you don't respect the CSS style, but it's going to be more like a smart document. And I don't know, it's something, <laughs> it's something I, I care about in some weird way. So it's going to, I'm going to try it that way. Um, so things like that. And this, um, various other things, smaller little detail things, but overall, I just want a browser that's more like a document browser, like, uh, that would, I guess, feel a bit more like, like the web used to feel before it got totally invaded by, um, all these companies targeting consumers and, um, and advertising became such a big thing on the internet. Um, yeah, but I guess to loop around, I think, I think you can definitely build a browser and I'm building one right now. So of course you can, and it doesn't render much of the web yet, but we're making progress little by little and it's an incremental thing. And if like the, the thing that I enjoy the most about this YouTube channel since I started it is showing people that you can build anything, like no matter how big something is, you can build it incrementally. Um, and I really feel like that's something that I've understood. And I really want to help others understand that and see that as well. Like nothing is too big to be built incrementally. And the web browser is just another thing like that. And um, if you watch my channel, you can see me doing it. And, you know, little one hour chunks every day lately. <laughs> and, um, but anything can be done like that. It doesn't matter what it is. <sighs> yeah, it's getting cold in here. Uh, so I should probably get going. But <laughs> I just wanted to talk about this today. So thanks for hanging out with me in the quarantine talk. Um, I, uh, I, I guess I, I kind of like this format right now, but maybe we'll experiment with it a little bit. Um, but for now, it's good. So thanks for hanging out. It's good talking. And I'll see you next time. I hope everybody's taking care, by the way, I should mention. Because it's getting pretty freaking weird. Um, and it looks like it's only going to get weirder. Yeah. But we got to stay sane. So uh, I guess I'll repeat my recommendation to everybody that do have something uh, that, that feels good to work on. Because working on something when things are getting weird around you is very, very helpful, I think. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you next time. Bye.